This screencast is a continuation of the examination of the helix in which I gave you a parameterization and we're in the process of computing the Vernet basis vectors, the curvature, radius of curvature and torsion. And I'd gotten through as far as computing the, um, the first two basis vectors and the, the curvature and, and radius of curvature. And offline I fixed my sketch of the oscillating circle I've moved it into an orientation in which I'm better able to draw it. It's still not necessarily an accurate sketch of the oscillating circle because I don't have uh, actual numbers here, but uh, that's meant to be the, the center of the circle. This is the, the normal vector. And the thing is, you see it now is drawn as an ellipse. And the reason is, is because even though it is a circle, when looked at from above, straight down, because this circle is tilted, it's, it, it, it's the plane in which this circle lies, also called the oscillating plane, is not perpendicular to the z-axis. I show the circle here too, again it's just a sketch. It's tilted, it's a little difficult to say, it lies in a plane that is because this curve is pitched upwards, the plane in which this oscillating circle lives is tilted with respect to the z-axis, and so it does not appear circular here. In this case you weren't actually asked to draw the os oscillating circle, but I, I want to, to show it. Let's go on. The next thing to compute, in fact, the last two things to compute are the binormal vector and then the torsion. So let's do that. The binormal vector is given by the cross product of the tangent and normal vectors. So let's just write it out. It'll be good practice in taking cross products. Across the normal vector, and again, I want to I want to write this out so that you have practice, or you can see the way I would have done it. So I always put these components in first, then my unit vectors, and then you can do this yourself. So I have this on the outside, and then I will have plus, and you'll see it's sine squared plus cosine squared. I think I'll just write that as k hat. You can see that that's sine squared plus cosine squared. And so we get, I will go ahead and pull a k out of that as well. I'll just write the answer. Okay, so this is our vector B, our binormal vector. And in principle, we can now plot it on our previous sketch. Let's go back. Let's give it a try. So this vector is perpendicular to each of these two vectors. And it's kind of, it's largely actually coming towards you, which makes it difficult to draw. You have to get in your mind that's coming coming towards you. Again, a little bit difficult to draw these vectors by hand, um, but there they are. So those are our three Fernet basis vectors for the helix at that point. Let me go on then. Remind you first the final thing to compute is the torsion. So we have most of what we need to compute torsion. So torsion. tau, and I'll remind you of the, how it's defined. It's defined to be minus n dot b prime, the derivative of b with respect to the parameterization, divided by r prime, the magnitude of r prime. So what we need is b prime, so let's work it out over here. We need to differentiate, we need to differentiate this vector with respect to t. So that was easy. So we plug in here, we have a minus one over r prime. So I'll have to go back and look at that, what that was. Then we have the dot product between n uh, dot. Now this, I have a k over square root of r squared plus k squared. I'm just going to put pull that out and put it here. And what's left is, I think you can just see immediately uh, the dot product of these two vectors will be minus one, which will cancel that minus sign. And so therefore the torsion, tau, let me just grab all this and bring it to the next page. So this will simply be reduced to k over r squared plus k squared. So that then is the torsion for the helix. And the things to note about this are, let me just emphasize that this is again constant as with the curvature, and it's not equal to zero unless k 
is equal to 0. We have, because they're rather important, we have that the curvature for the helix is equal to r over r squared plus k squared. And we have that the torsion is equal to k over r squared plus k squared. And we have seen that they are uh, both constant. So we started with a general parameterization of a helix, and we've derived that the, the torsion and the curvature are constants. In fact, this is the property of a helix. Any space curve with constant, non-zero curvature and torsion is, in fact, a helix. So that's its defining property. Okay. And this is, I believe, then all I have to say about the helix.